was January 1st, 010101. All right, well, in binary computer code, that's a shutdown order. All right, that's, that's a shutdown code. Well, the holdover for all the Millennium Scare about computers crashing was because the old coders used two digits for everything because memory was expensive. As it turned out, it wasn't as big of a deal as people thought. All right, we, we got through it easily enough. Uh, but the Maya Encounter is making great movies. Uh, it's making a great tourist market. The Maya are loving it. Uh, they are the Mayan groups in, in, in Yucatan and other places. Man, they're pumping up the, the end of the world thing because they're just getting tourists. They have people who want to be there on, on you know, be there near Chichen Itza when everything goes. It's kind of, hey, I want to be here. Yeah. What about weather? Like, is there like math patterns in our weather? Sure there are. Yeah, I'm sure there are too. I'm not, I, I, there's so many variables involved though with weather that there would be some patterns, but it would be difficult to, be able to separate what the colors are like to position them. But we'll get into systems of equations and um, we're just going to do simple systems of equations, two variables, two equations, and maybe three by three. But weather, I mean, some of the programs that predict weather have seven, eight more variables and a bunch of different equations that, that relate those to each other. And so they're not always accurate? Yeah, well, there's just no way with all the different variables you could have. Extremely accurate. Yeah. Yes. You can get close. My best explanation I had from, from weather and, and math and weather is from a guy that used to go to my church, Bill Scotes. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. Um, he was studying meteorology at the University of Chicago in the 1940s. And in 1945, he got an assignment to analyze these weather patterns in the Pacific. And later on, he found out that his professor was one of General Groves's assistance and he was figuring out the weather patterns before the bombing runs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But yeah, there are certain patterns that they look for uh, things to do predictions with. And it, at that time it was an inexact science and that was much more exacting. But even then, I mean, if you want a job where you can be wrong and still get paid, be okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, they, they can stand up and say anything they want. It's going to snow tomorrow. You know, they can tell me it's going to snow tomorrow in college station. They're going to be wrong, but you know, they'll still get paid. Well, this pattern said there was a chance of well, a chance of a whole lot of things. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> I, got, I bought I bought some books to, to help up with my research. Help up with my research. Uh, to help me with my research, and my colleagues at Louisville said, "So basically, you just spent forty bucks on nothing." Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. Uh, let me get your stuff back from you before you take off with you. I'm going to take that home with you. Guys, please eat some food. Get some food with you. Um, I'm not going to make you stay 10 minutes today. We're going to quiz us. So. <laughs> See you on Monday. Have you ever done that again? What? I can take your stuff. I'm going to smile. But you know we're stuck. Oh so you can go to Target. Oh, it makes stuff. your brain stuck. Well, I got that stuff. Not if I don't have any money. But your stuff is there. You can, you can pay a choir. I don't want to go there and grab stuff. No, 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 this stuff is mine. You can hold it. Well, you know how that works out. <laughs> Yeah. So, so what about that? Inches and stuff like that. Nope. that was just, uh, and all, all groups used just, you know, any kind of measuring system. It just is a way to standardize it. Uh, standardize it. If you look at the metric system, a lot of that was Greek or was French hairdressers. So they were put to work doing mathematics because there wasn't enough work for them doing hairdressing. So they were, they were put to work doing mathematical tables to standardize metric uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, I've been waiting want... for them to go metric for ages. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. as a kid growing yeah. up in yeah. the 60s and 70s, I was I'm still waiting for my bedroom. Do you want some cookies? Oh, 
mean, yeah, you know, no, I, we can I, say I, there's an infinite number of separate. galaxies, but there's yeah. a way to wrap it so that there's a finite way to get to it. So it's kind of a wormhole. Is that an iPad? Is that an iPad? So I'm going to because I'm dyslexic. I listen to a lot of my books. Right. I draw my readings. Oh, that's very cool. Finite, we obviously measure. Well, that was part of the only thing that goes back to the Greeks, you know, with Zeno's paradox. It's mm -hmm. kind of everything measurable, everything they could see was, no, this is wrong. The race will end. Right? But because they had no concept of a zebra, then they couldn't reach their, their, their mass. They had going on in even though we now know, okay, it is a finite. It's just so fine in there that it doesn't matter. You know, a human being cannot take a step that's one 380 thousandths of an inch. You can't do it. You know, you're getting to the atomic level at that point. So, And I, I will admit that some of it throws me. You know, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm not quite sure, you know. Well, he had some interesting, I, I'm having a, kind of a hard time with this particular graphic. Um, But he's talking about how a, a couple of light, essentially, right. 